I think we've all watched sci-fi movies where humanity has achieved interstellar travel, where we're able to travel out into the far beyond of the cosmos, and we're able to live on other planets. But the question is, when will we be able to actually do that? And no, I'm not talking about identifying habitable planets like we've all heard about Kepler 1694C, but instead I'm talking about what would it actually take us to make it even feasible to live on other planets? So before we start talking about setting up home on other planets, let's first talk about how we'll get there. Our closest neighbor, Venus, can be a mere 61 kilometers away, but Neptune and its furthest from Earth is 4.3 billion kilometers away. But what do those numbers actually mean? How long would it take us to reach those planets? We can have an approximate guess on how long it would take us to reach those planets based on how long it took probes to get to there. The Cassini probe took 7 years to reach Saturn, courtesy of the gravitational assist of Jupiter, while the Perseverance rover took around 7 months months to get to Mars. We could reach most of the observable universe if we develop some sort of transport method that would either allow us to 1. travel at the speed of light, which most physicists deemed impossible, or 2. transcend time and space using wormholes and warp propulsion, which most physicists also deem impossible. So let's pretend we've managed to make a space trap that can travel around one tenth of the speed of light. Now you'd also need to focus on your food supply. Most of your diet will consist of vacuum packed dehydrated delicacies. During a typical meal in space, a meal tray is used to hold the food containers. Astronauts lap by a strap or attached to a wall. The meal tray becomes the astronaut's dinner plate and enables him or her to choose from several foods at once. Mm. Just like home. <laughs> now for environmental conditions, space is not a natural habitat for humans to be in, and Earth radiation is not really a problem because we have a magnetic field protecting us that can scatter light waves and radioactive ultraviolet rays. The longer we spend in space and the further away from Earth we are, the more exposed we are to the radiation. So we could be looking at radiation sickness as a possible hazard in your journey. Another thing we should be concerned about is that the body is really good at getting rid of things it doesn't need. Such as that at a time you lose about 10% of your bone density in space and around 20% of your muscles. Because if you're floating around in zero gravity, there's no gravity pulling down on you. So there's no need for the body to maintain bone density. So at a time you have to exercise around 2 hours a day in order to just maintain these bodily functions. So your body doesn't slowly collapse over time. So you've survived of that. Congratulations on your survival. Let's pretend that you've arrived on your dream planet. It's now time for you to set up your home. The first requirement for a human settlement is a habitat. An isolated environment able to maintain air pressure, composition, the amount of oxygen, and temperature, and protect the inhabitants from radiation. This is likely to be a relatively large and heavy structure. Once the habitat is built, the colony will need to continue supply of water, oxygen, energy, and food to sustain its inhabitants. So pretending like we've hit the jackpot and we've landed on a habitable planet with water, continuous resources, and oxygen, we can now set up our colony. So anyways everybody, whether you're watching this in your cozy space hotel or watching this down on Earth, I'd like to thank you for watching till the end. I'm Nikolai Nash, see you once again, signing out.